We've put together this video to familiarize you with safety guidelines, rules, and procedures that apply to all retail employees. Depending on the position for which you were hired, additional safety training may be required. If you have any questions about the material presented in this video, be sure to ask your supervisor or store director before beginning work. Nothing is more important than your safety as well as the safety of every employee. Our first topic to cover is emergency evacuation procedures. If an emergency were to occur that would require the store to be evacuated, employees must be able to respond quickly and orderly. To begin with, an employee that detects fire, smoke, or any other emergency should respond by immediately notifying a member of management, either by intercom or the PA system, if time permits. The manager will be responsible for making the decision whether or not to evacuate the building. If time does not permit to notify a manager, the employee that detects fire or smoke should activate the fire alarm at the nearest pool station. Upon notification to evacuate the building, stop what you're doing and calmly walk to the nearest exit, then proceed to the designated assembly area and assemble by department. Department heads and other designated employees will assist employees and customers to emergency exits and then conduct a search of all restrooms, offices, freezers, coolers, and storage closets to assure all persons are evacuated. No employee should leave the assembly area until instructed to do so. Do not re-enter the building until the all clear has been given from a member of management. If you do not know the location of the emergency exits or the designated assembly area, be sure to ask your supervisor or store director at the conclusion of this video. Hazard communication and chemical safety. Each store has a right to know information station located either around the time clock or in the employee break area. The station holds a safety data sheet book that contains a chemical inventory list of every chemical approved for use within the store along with a corresponding safety data sheet. Employees may look up the safety data sheet for any approved chemical at any time. The safety data sheet contains important information about the chemical including health and safety information, chemical characteristics, and precautions for safe handling. A copy of Brookshire Brothers Hazard Communication Plan is also kept in front of the safety data sheet book. Employees may view the plan at any time. Now let's take a look at specific requirements pertaining to chemical safety. All chemicals are to be stored in their original or approved container with a manufacturer label attached. Always read manufacturer labels and observe safety precautions which apply to handling, storage, and usage. Containers with missing, faded, or torn labels should be discarded. Never mix chemicals unless labels specifically instruct. Most cleaners approved for use arrive at the store in concentrated form. These concentrated cleaners are connected to chemical dispensing stations which automatically dilute the cleaners with water as they are dispensed. Never transfer or dispense a chemical to an unmarked container or a container labeled for a different chemical. Inform your supervisor if appropriate spray bottles are not available so additional bottles can be ordered. Working in a grocery store requires a certain amount of lifting. By developing safe lifting habits, you can help protect yourself against unnecessary injuries and back-related medical problems. Pay attention as we demonstrate what is considered safe lifting techniques. Stand as close as you can to the load with your feet spread apart about shoulder width. Squat down bending your knees, not your waist. Keep your back straight. Get a good grip with both hands before beginning the lift. Begin slowly lifting with your legs, not your back. Keep the load close to your body to reduce the force on your back. If you must turn while carrying the load, turn using your feet, not your torso. It is equally important that the load is set down correctly. The same procedure should be followed in reverse order when setting down the load. Lastly, always ask for help if an item is too heavy or bulky to safely lift alone 
and never attempt to lift anything you do not feel comfortable lifting. Our next topic is ladder safety. Before using a ladder, always inspect to make sure it is safe to use. Inspect the rubber feet, spreaders, and steps for damage or defects. If a ladder does not pass inspection or appears unsafe in any way, report it to your supervisor and do not use it until it has been properly repaired or replaced. If dirt, oil, or food scraps are present on the steps, be sure to clean prior to using. Before climbing onto the ladder, make sure the legs rest on a level surface and it is steady. Use both hands when going up or down the ladder. If you need to retrieve supplies from a shelf or other surface, hand the items down to another employee. Never stand on the top platform or the step next to it. When working on a ladder, always face the ladder. Never turn to the side or face backwards. Do not overextend. Get down and move the ladder if you cannot easily reach the task at hand. If you must use a ladder near a door, have another employee stand guard. Step stool safety is very similar to ladder safety. Before using a step stool, always inspect it for damage and make sure it's not wobbly. If a step stool does not pass inspection, report it to your supervisor. The step stool should be discarded and a replacement ordered. If dirt, oil, or food scraps are present on the steps, be sure to clean before using. Make sure the legs rest on a level surface and the stool is stable. Always use a step stool that is tall enough for the job and avoid overreaching. If necessary, get down and move the stool closer to the item you're trying to reach. Finally, do not stand on milk crates or other items not designated to be used as a step stool. Most products arrive at the store packaged in cardboard boxes. After these boxes are unloaded, they will need to be crushed in the baler. To use the baler, lift the gate and place boxes inside. Lower the gate until it is closed, then stand clear and activate the power switch. Never operate the baler with the gate in the open position or with a safety switch bypassed. Once the baler is full, the crushed boxes will need to be made into a bale. Do not attempt to make a bale unless you are properly trained. Additionally, the baler should remain in good working condition. Immediately report any malfunctions or safety related issues to your supervisor and never enter the baler for any reason. Lastly, no one under the age of 18 is allowed to load, unload, or operate the baler for any reason. Some locations are equipped with compactors for disposing of trash. The compactor is a large enclosed dumpster located outside the store. A door on the inside of the store opens to a chute that connects to the compactor. To use the compactor, open the door and place trash in the chute. At some locations, a pusher is needed to push trash down the chute into the compactor. Once the trash is in the compactor, it will need to be cycled to make room for additional trash. Only those employees 18 years of age or older are allowed to load or operate the compactor. No employee should ever enter the connecting chute or the compactor for any reason. As a final point, the compactor door should remain closed and locked when not in use. In a grocery store, floors must be kept clean, dry, and free of clutter to help prevent slips, trips, and falls. Since no one person can be everywhere at all times, it's every employee's responsibility to keep an eye out for slip and trip hazards on the floor. To begin with, items that do not belong on the floor, such as trash, produce, merchandise, or food scraps, should be immediately cleaned up. It's never okay to leave these types of items on the floor after they've been discovered. Next, if a liquid spill is observed or reported on the sales floor, immediate action must be taken to ensure it is properly cleaned up. The best way to respond to a spill and to start the cleanup process is for one employee to stand guard at the spill, while another employee retrieves cleaning supplies. However, if another employee is not available, place a wet floor cone directly next to the spill, then immediately proceed to retrieve cleaning supplies. Most liquid spills should be cleaned with a product called Spill Magic, 
Spill Magic is an absorbent powder that's kept in spill response stations conveniently located throughout the store. Each station contains all the tools needed to properly clean a spill. Instructions to clean a spill are located on every container of Spill Magic. Step 1. Surround the spill on one side with Spill Magic. Step 2. Starting from one side, work the Spill Magic into the spill with the push broom. If a liquid residue remains or if the Spill Magic turns gummy, pour more Spill Magic directly onto the spill this time. And step 3. After moving the used Spill Magic aside, lightly sprinkle a small amount over the spill area. Using a firm circular motion, work Spill Magic into the area. This final action will make sure the surface is clean and dry and will also leave the broom clean for the next spill. Step 4. Remove all the used Spill Magic from the area and dispose of it in a trash bag. It's very important to return all of the tools to the spill response station immediately after use. If there is not enough spill magic in the container to handle the next spill, be sure to get a new container. Water and other liquids can also reach the floor because of maintenance issues such as leaks. Any leak detected should be immediately reported to a supervisor or manager in charge. Until repairs have been completed, steps should be taken to make the work area safe. As mentioned at the first of this section, it is every employee's responsibility to continually be on the lookout for slip and trip hazards and to take immediate action if any are observed or reported. Depending on the position for which you were hired, you may be required to sack and carry out groceries. This section of the video focuses on carry out safety. Once groceries have been sacked and placed in a cart, allow the customer to get a big enough lead so you do not accidentally bump him or her with the cart. After exiting the store, look both directions before proceeding onto the parking lot and do not proceed until all vehicles have passed or stopped to let you cross. Once in the parking lot, pay special attention to cars backing out of parking spaces. If you see someone backing up, move out of the way because they may not see you. When you arrive at the vehicle, be careful not to let the cart bump into it. If the wind is blowing or the customer is parked on a hill, it may be necessary to hold the cart with one hand while unloading groceries with the other hand. Be sure to check the lids on chemicals and cleaners to ensure they're tight and that the containers are sitting in the upright position. Once all the groceries have been placed in the vehicle, carefully close the door or trunk lid, then return to the store following the same precautions as described for exiting the store. On the way back to the store, gather any loose carts in the surrounding area and return them to the designated area. Safe Stocking Procedures most merchandise is delivered to the back room of the store on pallets. The merchandise is then sorted and placed onto stocking carts so it can be easily transported to the sales floor. When stacking onto carts, be careful not to stack product higher than the height of the handles. Two people should transport heavy stock carts. One person should guide from the front while the other person pushes. Take extra care when transporting stock carts through doors leading from the back room to the sales floor since customers or employees may be standing on the other side. Carts must be pulled and not pushed through the doorways. Once on the sales floor, always attempt to park carts out of the way to prevent customers from reaching around or trying to climb over. Merchandise should be worked directly from the stock cart and should not be spotted on the floor. Boxes lying on the floor increase the risk for a trip and fall. When opening or breaking down boxes, only Brookshire Brothers issued box cutters are approved for use. A shopping cart or stock cart should be kept nearby to place empty boxes and other trash. Never place empty boxes or other trash on the floor. As soon as the last box has been removed from the stock cart, it should be pushed to the back room. Empty stock carts should not be left on the sales floor for any amount of time. Certain types of products are approved to be brought onto the sales floor and stocked directly from pallets. When doing so, special precautions must be taken to never leave empty or partially empty pallets on the sales floor unattended. Empty pallets should be immediately carried to the back room or dock area and stacked in the designated location. 
Brookshire Brothers strives to maintain a safe and healthy workplace free from recognized hazards that can lead to injury. However, if you do become injured while on the job, it is your responsibility to report the injury to the store director or manager in charge within 24 hours, no matter how minor the injury. This video is not intended to convey all aspects of the Brookshire Brothers Safety Program. Additional information is provided by the Employee Owner Orientation and Information Guide that was given to each employee at the time of hire. Also, the entire safety program is contained within the Brookshire Brothers Retail Safety Plan. You may request a copy of the plan from your store director or by contacting the Risk Management Department at the corporate office. This concludes our video, and remember, safety is up to you.